All right, I'm going to take a little break from the Revelation expository study. I'll be back to that here soon, but I just really felt the Lord, I was praying about this, and I just said, you know, um, I know a lot of the brethren out there are really going through some rough times right now, and, and um, what would you have me preach? And I prayed about this, and one word came into my mind, and I thought, you know, I want to do a word study on this, and that word is hope. So we're going to look about this word hope. We're not going to go through all the references in the Bible, but some really, really encouraging things um, about this uh, word hope. For a Christian, uh, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, if you've not given your life to Jesus, uh, then this sermon is really not for you. Uh, the Bible says, uh, we are not as others which have no hope. Okay, talking about lost people. Uh, you don't have any hope if you don't have Jesus Christ. Um, hope is for Christians. So if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ, then uh, go watch the salvation message. Uh, put everything else aside in your life. Your job is not important. Your relationships aren't important. Your meals aren't important. None of that stuff is important um, compared to your salvation. Your eternal destination is the most important thing that you have to figure out in this life. All right. Get that figured out. And then come back and watch this. So, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It was really good, you know, too, for me as I'm reading through this, these passages of Scripture. So, great encouragement. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wow. So we see there, what does hope bring? Peace. We have hope understanding that there is an eternity for us in heaven and that there are great and precious promises recorded for us in His Word that we can rely on. You're going to see that throughout this study. It's, it's really you know, some very encouraging things there. But look at verse 3. We glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You're going to find that out as a Christian. And it's hard. It is not easy. I mean, the Bible says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's easier said than done. Um, when you have family attacking you and you have marriages falling apart and you have financial problems and you have health problems and everything else, you got to remember you got to glory in that. And you know what happens? You'll learn to wait on the Lord. And that's tough. That's very tough. Um, when you go through tribulation, I know, you know, again, I know I, as soon as I say that, it's like, a whole bunch of names pop into my mind, and I'm like, yeah, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. And, oh, boy, I just wish I could just take you out of that situation. wish I could just make the, the your time of tribulation. It's kind of interesting, too, because it's like, you know, people say, we're going to go into the great tribulation. And I'm going, if you're saved, you're already in it. <laughs> you know, okay? We're already in tribulation. Not the time of Jacob's trouble. We're in tribulation right now. You know, I'm looking forward to getting out of the tribulation. Okay? <laughs> Going to be with the Lord. You know, these people, oh, you know, Christians don't know what it's like to suffer. You're pre-trib rapture fib, you know, you're 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 just wanting to escape. 
Yes, yes, that's very true. I am wanting to escape the tribulation that I'm now in. Very, very true. Yes, you're absolutely right. But, uh, but it will work patience. Why? Um, how many times have you prayed a prayer and it's just like, you know, if you were on the phone, you'd be like going, hello? Uh, God, are you still there? Hello? 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 You know, you pray this prayer and you're just like, Lord, I need help with this. And I, what, what am I supposed to do? And it's just like, you know why? Because he's teaching you patience. And what does patience do? Patience brings experience so that you can help other Christians. You know, a lot of the things that I go through, that my wife goes through, that we have gone through as a couple, um, a lot of those things, we recount them, we tell them to encourage you to continue. A lot of you say things that you've gone through, and it encourages us. The tribulation that you have will work patience, and that patience will bring experience. I mean, there are times that you will think to yourself, I'm not going to get through it this time. I'm sick. I have this financial problem. I'm finished. This is it. The tribulation... God will teach you patience, and you get through it. And a little while later, you go, you know what? Yeah, I've been through this before. You get experience. Yeah. And what does experience bring? Hope. What is our hope as Christians? The blessed hope. The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you have hope? I do. And you're not going to take it from me, post trippers You're not going to take it. But let's continue. Romans chapter 8. Beginning in verse 20. It says here, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Let me stop there for a minute. The bondage of corruption. Isn't that interesting? Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. We're going to have glorious liberty when we get up there to be with the Lord. We're going to know even as we are also known. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about that. But he is subjected by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. I thought that was interesting too. We have been subjected. We are, we are, are what, what do we have? What keeps us sane? Our hope. <laughs> That's about it. Why? Because here in this life, we are caught up in bondage to corruption. Yeah, it's frustrating sometimes, you know. I mean, just like you get some kind of weird pain or sore in your body and you're like, oh man, this is really you know, kind of the thorn in the flesh thing. And you're going like, Lord, please help me to get rid of this thing. I don't know what the problem is here. And you finally get it corrected and something else goes wrong. And you're like, oh, nuts, you know. <laughs> and you, you, know, you see some kind of thing really going bad in the world and you're just going like, oh boy, this is bad. What is it? The bondage of corruption. We are tied to this world. We are here for a purpose. We'll get more into that later as we continue, but we're subjected to live in hope, looking for Jesus Christ while being in bondage to this world. Every year that passes by, you feel more aches, you feel more pains, you feel closer to death. Mm -hmm. Something, isn't it? Verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit the redemption of our body. Looking forward to it. Verse 24, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, 
why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Where does patience come from? Tribulation. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. You see? It's really kind of interesting. We are in the tribulation right now as the body of Christ. And we'll be leaving. <laughs> so you say, are you post-trib? Well, in that sense, yeah, I am post-tribulation rapture. <laughs> My tribulation is going to be over when the Lord says, come up hither. Praise the Lord for that. Verse 26, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Have you ever been there? You know? You don't even know how to pray. You don't even know what to pray. It's just like, uh, you know, i gotten so sick, you know, I get so sick, I should say, not gotten. <laughs> I get so sick sometimes. I mean, I, I do good, and then it's just like, boom, really bad sometimes. And I've gotten so sick at times, it's just like, you know, do you want this kind of food? No. Do you want to go for a walk outside, get some fresh air? No. Do you want to take a nap? No. It's just like, uh, I'm just like, Lord, just get me out of this thing. I don't know. <laughs> I can't even really even talk right. Yeah. It's those times that the Holy Spirit will be very near to you. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Life verse right there. Whatever you're going through, it is working together for good. You say, what, but brother, I don't see how this, what I'm going through right now, how can this be working together for good? Well, if you're being chastened for something that you've done wrong, well, even that technically is working together for good. The chastening is a good thing. But, if you, haven't, if you examine yourself and you say, Lord, I, what did I do to deserve this? Well, keep in mind, Romans 8, 28. Whatever you're going through, it will work together for good. It will be tribulation that you're going through, and it is working patience in you, and that patience leads to experience, and that experience will bring you hope. And hope is one of the most blessed things that we have. Pretty interesting. Next, let's go to Romans chapter 12. Looking at my notes, I have them over here on the table. If you've seen the tour of the thing, it's over here on this table beside me. <laughs> so, going to be working on some other things, you know, stuff like that. I have more work to do in here, but Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 12. We'll read these verses. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with, com with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor that which is evil? Oh yeah, absolutely. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Not, excuse me, rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Isn't that something? You see it again. A tie-in. Patient in tribulation. Tribulation works patience. Patience, experience. Experience, hope. And in hope, you can rejoice. And we're going to see that again. Like I said, this is a thing that will continue throughout the theme of this study. You're going to see the things that are awaiting us in heaven are going to be so mind-blowing, just like, wow. I mean, get up there, you have a body that is, it's not a, you know, well, I get a brand new body and, you know, as soon as I drive it off the showroom floor, it loses value, you know. <laughs> no, no. Your body is going to be 
in a permanent state of perfection. Immortal body that does not corrupt. You aren't going to look in, you know, yourself after the first million years and go, man, I'm getting wrinkles. Man, you know, probably get some Botox treatment or something here in my face. Uh-uh. My teeth are getting kind of corroded here. Nope. Incorruptible. And that's just your body. Then you think about the city, New Jerusalem, and, you know, city with, with golden streets. We walk on gold. You know, unbelievable riches. It's going to be incredible what we have awaiting for us in heaven. That is our hope. Pretty amazing stuff. Next, let's go to Romans chapter 15, beginning in verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Hmm. Patience, comfort, hope. Now the God of patience and cons consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I did a video on this a little while ago, and there's only a few things that we can really disagree on as Christians, you know, agree to disagree on, and that's celebration of holidays, because there are different kindreds, different people, different ethnicities that have different traditions, different holidays, and things like that. Romans 14 says that every man's to be fully persuaded in his own mind. Okay? Diet is the second thing. One is weak, eats herbs, another eats everything, meat included, you know. Um, fine. You're not to judge each other on that. And then the third one that I believe in is the thing of head coverings. Again, it's a cultural thing. First Corinthians chapter, was it 10, I think it is, or 11. Um, let me go there real quick just to make sure I get my reference correct. Um, 11. Verse 16, if, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Okay, talking about head coverings, um, physical head coverings. They're arguing over the thing. Uh, you know, there are, there are orth, Orthodox Jews that, that believe the woman should have a head covering on, only her husband should see her hair, and, and you know, different things and stuff like that. Again, provision is made there where we have no such custom. No big deal, Paul is saying. Um, but a lot of the doctrinal stands that we take, there is no leeway. There is no, well, we can agree to disagree on the timing of the rapture. We can agree to disagree on dispensational teaching. We can agree to disagree on Bible version issue. No, we can't. No, we can't. If you're saved, you need to be following a bunch of different things that are very vital, important doctrines. And if you're not following those things, you might be green. You might be just newly saved, you know, and I don't mean green as environmentally friendly. I mean, a rookie, novice, you know. Um, so I'm not going to judge somebody that's brand new saved. But you get somebody that's been saved for a while that knows the issue and they reject timing of the rapture, they reject dispensational teaching or whatever else. Sorry, I don't believe they're saved. So what if you're wrong? Well, okay, I'll apologize to them when we get to heaven. But uh, if I'm right, and I believe I am, then uh, I'm the best friend that they have because I'm warning them. And you're not their friend if you're not warning them. But let's uh, jump down to verse 13. Romans chapter 15 here, verse 13 and 14. It says here, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Yeah. Once you learn the Bible, once you learn things and you, you study under this ministry or some other Bible-believing ministry, and you are filled with the knowledge of, of the Lord, the Lord will lead you, guide you into all truth. Once you do that, now you can admonish other people. Admonishing can work in, in terms of exhortation, where you're exhorting brethren, you see them struggling, and you say, hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, remember, the Bible says, Romans 8, 28, and that's admonishing. Admonishing can also be a loving rebuke. And I thank the Lord that I get rebuked from my brothers and sisters in Christ. And yes, I did say sisters. 
There's a right way to do it if you're a sister in Christ. To lovingly come and say, Brother Ron, I'm not trying to usurp your authority or anything else, but you said such and such. Doesn't the Bible say this? You know, you let the Lord rebuke me. See, quoting scripture. And I've had to say, yeah, you know what? You're right. A number of times, and I'll do that. Right? It's, it's great. But again, we see there, joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope. And the God of hope, he'll fill you with those things. It's quite incredible. And again, when you have hope, when you, can, when you stand on the promises of God's word, you can admonish one another and encourage and uplift and softly, kindly rebuke in love one another. It's a great thing. Next, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 through 10. It says here, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort where we, wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, get a hold of that one, the sufferings of Christ abound in us. Christ had disciples, many of them turned on him. Christ was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Family, friends, relatives, people being ashamed of him. Are you going through that? Yeah. So our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. So you're going through the sufferings, but your consolation, your rewards that you're going to have in heaven will be great if you stand by the Lord. In due season we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians chapter 6 talks about that. Verse 6, And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Have you been there? Yeah. You think to yourself, how on earth am I going to get out of this thing? I'm really sick or this thing's happening. My marriage is totally falling apart. I just lost my job. I'm going to be out on the street. I, what am I going to do? I mean, despairing even of life. Verse 9, but we have had, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. God will deliver you when you get saved, but he will also deliver you when you're having problems. And you might not see it. Uh, you might be looking out at the future just going, I don't know how on earth I'm going to get out of this thing. I just don't see any other way. I mean, the rapture, you know, please, Lord, come back soon, you know. Uh, come quickly, Lord, please. Uh, that's a lot of the attitude that you're going to have sometimes. But, you know, the present situation that you're in, Romans 8.28 said it's going to work together for good. So in a sense, the longer you're here as a Christian, your life can improve, but we're still looking for the rapture. We're still looking and saying, okay, Lord, you know, I've had enough of the bondage of corruption down here. Can, can, you know, can we leave now? <laughs> and he'll make that decision. But again, hope. You see it there. Let's continue. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Another good one that I follow quite a bit. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great hope plainness of speech. Every Bible believer I've ever met, real Bible believer that's saved, will use great plainness of speech. Why? Because we have hope? 
you know again you know i get i get this thing all the time in the comments who are you to judge people's salvation you have no right to judge people's salvation you shouldn't say that people are lost you know i never get somebody saying you shouldn't say that people are saved it's kind of ironic you know it's 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 wrong for me to say so and so is lost but it's okay for me to say that everybody's saved you know everybody or anybody's saved interesting but i mean what kind of a preacher would i be what kind of a christian would you be if all we ever did was walk around saying i i don't really know who's saved i think that you know god's going to work all that stuff out we're we're going to we'll know when we get there why why bother reading the bible why bother preaching why bother anything it's absurd we have hope therefore it gives us great plainness of speech That's what it's about. Next, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. You know, word studies are nice because, you, you know, I, basically I'll go through the list and I'll say, okay, yeah, that'd be good for the study and, and things. And I go through and it's, you know, kind of going from, you know, back to front or front to back, excuse me. Uh, so it's, you know, easier to turn to that way. But that's the nice thing about word studies. Sometimes we'll, you know, throw in other scriptures to refer to things. But uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, we'll start there. 12 through... Look at my references here. Okay. That we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. So this is talking to saved people. And again, this is, in my opinion, this is the best uh, passage right here. This next verse, verse 13 is the greatest uh, verse that proves a quote-unquote pre-trib rapture. Definitely, without a doubt. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Christians can't go into the time of Jacob's trouble and face the mark of the beast, because if a Christian took the mark, they would prove God to be a liar. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14 which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Do you feel insignificant sometimes as a Christian in this life? Sure. You look at world events and it's just like this is going on and these big things and they're, they're talking about war and there might be a possibility of this and there's a, that and there's, you know all this other stuff. And it's just like, who am I? Christian? You are part of the body of Christ. Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And he has authority over everything. Why are you afraid of men? Why am I afraid of men? Think about that for a minute. Hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Far above all principality, power, and might, and dominion. And, you know, you know I'll, I'll say, you know, I say, you know, things will get bad in this country. Um, you know, what I'm saying, things will get bad, I'm saying we're not going to be living at peace anymore, and that is technically a bad thing. But uh, it's only going to be if the Lord allows that stuff to happen. I mean, let's just face it. The Jesuits are pretty much in control of this country. You know, um, pockets of resistance here and there, sure. 
But uh, things are getting bad quickly. But you know what? The black pope himself could come here to this house with an army of 20,000 men and the Lord could say, don't touch him. And they're forced to listen. I mean, the most evil, most wicked, Muslim terrorists, just horrible, wicked, whatevers, could come to your house and the Lord can say, don't touch him. What great hope. Yeah. So what do you do? You continue working for the Lord, no matter what happens. No matter what tribulation you endure. And understand that the tribulation that you're currently going through, that there seems to be no end to it, there is an end to it. Why? Because God is using tribulation to teach you patience. And that patience through going through it over and over again, will work experience, and that experience will give you hope. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope, of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, saved people, talking about. Again, we're part of his body. It's an amazing thing. It gives us great hope. I mean, what other religion offers this kind of a thing? Catholicism. Well, if you, uh, as long as you're committing venial sins, and not mortal sins. If you die in a state of grace and, and you, you know, whatever, I mean, the priest can still come and perform the last rites, you know, and put a little oil thing cross on your head and stuff, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, works. You never know. It's a sin of presumption. You know, if you say that you know that you're saved, you know you're going to go to heaven when you die. And of course, the best you can do as a Catholic, you're probably still going to have to go to purgatory and burn for a while. Great and precious promises there, boy. You know, I have hope that I'm going to, you know, burn a little bit less when I get to purgatory. That's nice, you know. <laughs> uh, no absent from the body present with the Lord, okay? I don't need to go and be burned for a while, all right? Islam, what do you have for Islam? Well, Islam, uh, Muhammad basically lived in, in, as a sex pervert and he died showing how to kill infidels and things like this. And, and uh, if we follow his teachings and you know, die in holy jihad, well, then maybe we'll attain a better resurrection and go be able to fornicate with a bunch of women up in heaven or something. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I can't say for sure. Is there hope there? No. Buddha. Well, um, if you sit cross-legged and you, and you do good karma and you, get, you die with plenty of good karma, kind of sounds like Catholicism, you know, you die in a state of grace, but you get good karma and things like this and you, and you, you might you know, be reincarnated as a butterfly, you know, and then you'd be after that, you get reincarnated as something else until you become, you know, eventually become part of the life force that flows through the universe, positive energy or something. Do you know for sure? No, there's no hope. No hope. What about, uh, I think of another one, uh, Hinduism. Any number of different gods out there. And again, you got to do the whole karma thing and all this other stuff. No hope. You get down through all the false cults. None of them give you hope. What about Judaism? Modern Judaism. Is there any hope? Well, we do hope that we'll be resurrected. I mean, if, if we have a son and he's, you know, going through the bar mitzvah age and all that other stuff, you know, then he can pray for us and, and hopefully we'll, we'll attain to the resurrection, you know, when the Messiah truly shows up and things like this. Um, but do you have assurance? Do you have a hope that you're assured of? No, not really. You can have hope through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. So wasn't there some other way to heaven? No. Let's continue. Colossians chapter 1.
Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye, have, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Hmm. The hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye, have heard, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. The gospel, the good news contained in this book. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where your heart is, there will your, there will your treasure be also. Here's where our promises come from. Our hope. We have it right there. The word of truth. Our King James Bible. It's funny too because the verse that we just, the passage we just read there in Ephesians chapter 4 you know, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You know, these new versionists come along and they say, I think it's frightening to think that there could only be one Bible. Okay, you know, why? You know, I actually had my older brother tell me that the one time. He's a professing pastor and he said, he, he said uh, you know, that he thinks it's frightening to think that there, you know, there, there would only be one Bible. <laughs> okay. So God is a God of multiple contradicting versions of the Bible, each one holy and inspired and fallible and everything. And they all contradict one another? No, I believe that God said, okay, this is my book. Use it. And, you know, hey, test the other ones out. I did. For a lot of years as a false convert, I used the NIV. I used a, a New American Standard Version, the New King James for a little while and things. They don't work. They don't work. They won't change your life. They don't produce fruit. The King James Bible produces the fruit. You say, what about the Greek and Hebrew? Not going to produce fruit uh, at all. Okay? Unless you're speaking to Greek or Hebrew people. Hebrew speaking people. You know? Now I speak English. I'm going to preach out of the English King James Bible. And it produces fruit. And gives me hope for eternity. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It's a sudden thing. And now Paul compares it to the rapture. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All these people thinking that peace and safety is just around the corner. We're heading for good times. And it's like, you know, you look and it's like North Korea sending up missiles, you know, you know into the ocean, blowing up things. You know, peace and safety, peace. We're just about heading into peace. And Syria is just being bombed, you know, ISIS killing people and murder, death, war everywhere. And, China steals a naval drone and, and America's going, this is an act of war. Peace and safety, peace and safety, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just, you can see it. It's just like we're on this like powder keg and, you know, you, you look around and there's like another wick coming into it, you know, and it's like we're sitting on this big keg of gunpowder. Here comes a wick, you know, coming in this way, you know, and here's another one. Somebody lights that one. This one's coming in, that one's coming in, this one. And you're going... This whole thing's about ready to explode. And yet people are going around, I think things are pretty good. I think, you know, peace and safety and stuff. What's going on? They're not going to escape. They're going to be here when the thing goes off. We're leaving. Bye-bye. Verse 4. But ye, brethren, notice the contrast between they, the lost, and ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. You know, every time you see prophetic updates and things like this, you go, wow, we're getting close. We're getting close. You know, it's kind of like, wow, looking forward to it. 
Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, look at this, the hope of salvation. You know the one wound that you can't survive? When this organ here, you know, the brain, gets a bullet right through it. Uh, you can survive most other shots. Okay, if there's a medic there or whatever else in a war situation. You take one to the head, unless it's a glancing shot or something like that, you take one through the head, you are going to be dead. Okay, um, what you need, it's, it's, you know, very, very, very important, um, is you need the helmet of salvation, the hope of salvation. It's interesting, Ephesians chapter 6, I've written down here, verse 17, actually talks about the helmet of salvation. Here it's called, for an helmet, the hope of salvation. I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. The helmet of salvation is based on your hope. And by the way, if you're suffering tribulation, and the Lord's taking His time to answer some of your prayers, when He finally does, you realize, oh, He was working on my patience, and that's leading to experience, and then you have hope. Um, that's another good way to tell that you're saved. You're genuinely saved. As a Christian, you're going to suffer. As a Christian, uh, part of the fruit that you're going to be bearing is that people can look at you and they can see you're going through some tough times and yet you still have a, a joy and a peace about you. Yeah. Verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do and i can truly say that about my viewers uh, i love you all in christ and i see this all the time comfort yourselves together you know there's times i see a brother or a sister and they write a comment and they're just like i'm really going through a hard time right now and a couple other people will write and i'll be like hey i'm praying for you i know what you're saying i'm going through the same thing comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. I want to make sure I have my word order right there. You do it. I see it. And that's an encouragement to me. It's encouragement that I'm not just preaching to a whole bunch of lost people that are faking me out or something, you know. I see the tribulation that you're going through. I see the patience that comes from it. I see the fact that a lot of you have the experience. You can say, yeah, I've been through some things. You know what, sister? What you're going through with your lost husband there... I see it. I had the same thing. I'm going through the same thing myself. I, yeah, it's rough. I know what you're saying. Hey, brother, I, I know you lost your job. I understand. I've gone through the, I see this in the comments. You're doing what this verse says. And that's a great encouragement to me. We have hope, brethren. We're not without hope. Finally, turn to Titus. The book of Titus, chapter 1. First three verses, beginning in verse 1, in other words. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. Um, I thank the Lord for the ministry that He's given to me. And uh, I know He's committed it to me. Um, and I don't take that lightly. Uh, and I thank the Lord for you out there that encourage me. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been ready to just quit, not because I'm a, a quitter, not because I'm like, I just want to give up. You know, this is, I don't like it. I'm being attacked or something. It just wears me out after a while sometimes. And I, I get private messages or letters and I get people and they're just like, hey, I just want to encourage you. You know, you you really have meant a lot to me and I've, I've really been touched by your ministry. And it's back up. It just lifts me back up and says, get back to work. I appreciate that more than you can know. A lot of you say, you know, I can't wait to meet you in heaven someday. I want to shake your hand and things like this. And I want to shake your hand. I really do. Um, a lot of you out there, you know, we're, we're going to have a great time. 
when we meet. And I'm going to say, you know what? It was your letter that picked me up on that day that I was having a hard time. It was your encouragement. It was your words that spoke to me. And I appreciate that. I really do. But you see, brethren, again, what do we have that other people don't have? We have a God that cannot lie. Our God's not going to lie to us. And through that, we have great hope. I mean, we're not going to have some kind of a deal where, you know, we die and we go to be with the Lord or the Lord catches us up there and the Lord goes, you know, he's kind of snickering and stuff. We say, uh, what, what's funny? <laughs> i got to be honest with you. This whole thing was a joke, okay? Um, I'm sorry. I just played a really terrible joke on you. You know, depart from me, you curse an everlasting fire. No, 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 no. If you're saved, you have great hope. Your hope, if you're looking at your life and you're going, man, I'm going through it. Tribulation worketh patience. Patience worketh experience. Experience, hope. Our helmet, the helmet of salvation, the hope of salvation. The blessed hope, Jesus is coming back. The tribulation's over. I think it'd be kind of funny, you know. Lord gives me these little things sometimes. I mean, this is not even in the notes, you know. Again, you know, here's my notes, you know, paper notes. Uh, a lot of people are like, you know, they got their little fancy iPad things or whatever else. You know, um, that's why I'm like looking over here. It's on the table, you know. So, but, uh, and it, yeah, it's just, it's funny. The Lord gives me this stuff sometimes, you know. I'm right in the middle of it and I'm like, you know, these people, you know, I believe we're going through the tribulation, you know, and it's like, well, <laughs> you know, never really thought of that before this sermon, but uh, I am kind of post-trib then, I guess, really. You know, I'm post-tribulation, rapture. Um, when the rapture happens, my tribulation is over. Your tribulation's over. So, <laughs> uh, just, you know, just these little things, you know, I like to do this stuff occasionally just to keep the, uh, the heretics out there, just, you know, keep them frothing at the mouth, you know, and, and writing all their wonderful little, you know, attacks on me. I forget, I got one the other uh, week. It was so funny. It was, like, really good. Uh, I saw some guy um, put up a picture of me. Somebody, one of you let me know about their, like, you know, there's a YouTube channel that was just created, and some guy called it Cardinal Denlinger, you know, and he took a picture of a cardinal, like a Catholic cardinal, and he superimposed my face on it. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't know too many 41-year-old uh, cardinals, Catholic cardinals. You have to be a little bit older than that. But, uh, you know, I was really kind of hoping for the Pope, you know. I mean, just a cardinal? I mean, you can't do any better than that for me. But uh, I just wanted to put this thing together, just kind of take a little break from the whole Revelation study and, and some of the other things that we have coming up here. And just, just brethren, we have hope. Uh, don't lose sight of that. I know it's it gets rough, you know. Um, I you know I, I get you know it, it's interesting too because it's, you know we were talking about this this past week, my wife and I, and I said you know the more I grow in the ministry, the more experience I have um, dealing with people, the more I can understand the Apostle Paul, and he talked about that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, and it's just like. There are days I wake up, and again, you know, this this is stuff people don't even see that are that are, you know, you don't see this online. Uh, I I wake up and I'm just like, okay, I got to get this this and this done today, and I'm just like, all right, you know, I better check email because that's right, I wanted to check on such and such, and I go up, I check email, and there's an email from a brother or a sister or whatever, and I read it, and I'm just like, oh man, yeah, I got to help them with that situation, and. And that's, I mean, this is my job. This is what I do. I'm an elder in the church. You know, this is what I do. I'm like Paul. And so it's not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, don't write to me anymore with your problems. Please don't think that. But what I'm saying is, you know, you get somebody and it's like, this person's having marriage problems. And then I read, you know, a private message and I'm like, this person here is having financial problems. This person here has questions on such and such. They're being attacked over the year on this thing in there. And this brother, you know, I had a brother that lost his mother recently and, and it's just like, you know, I weep with them that weep. And I mean, I, it, I've gotten things from people and it's just like, you know, brethren that have lost their wives that they've been married to for years and years. And they're just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I, and I sit there and I just cry. You know, it's just like, I can imagine. 
you know, I think about my situation. I think, if, what would I do if my wife died or my son died? Or, and, it, you know, and it's just like, yeah, I can relate to Paul. The care of all the churches, it comes upon me daily. And there are many times I've just been, I've been focused on what I need to get done and I got to get this sermon researched and that thing. And it's just like some of the members of the body of Christ, they need my help. They need to know answers to the questions or they need my encouragement or they need admonishment. And it just goes and sidetracks me and it's like, okay, I got to get back to that. And, you know, it's part of being in ministry. And the more Christians you know, the longer you live as a Christian, you're going to get more and more of that stuff too. You don't have to be an elder in the church and, and overseeing the flock to, to have the care of the churches coming upon you. Uh, churches are people. Okay? We are the church, the body of Christ. One body. Um, that's what we are. And you're going to, as you grow up as a Christian, as you get older as a Christian, you're going to find that the true body of Christ suffers. We go through tribulation. And that's why I've always had to laugh at these people when they say, you know, Christians in America don't know what trouble's like and stuff like this. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Um, I know Christians that have gone through some horrible, horrible things. And the blessed hope, knowing that our Lord's going to be taking us out of here, um, it's something to look forward to. So, that's going to be it for this sermon. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You, Lord, for the hope that You give us. And I just praise You, Lord, for all that You've done for us. And, and uh, as Your Word says, when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. We're just such wicked, ungodly sinners down here, Lord, and the things that we've done... I think back over my past and I just shake my head sometimes and I think, how in the world? Why would He have saved me? I just don't understand. But I know that You did. I know that Your blood was shed for me. I'm a sinner. I thank You, Lord, for that. I thank You, Lord, for saving my brothers and sisters in Christ and giving us hope of an inheritance in heaven and hope that You're going to be catching us out of here and in Your timing, Lord. That's, that's the whole thing. And that we are here for a purpose. And um, Lord, I just pray for the brothers and sisters out there that are going through tribulation. That you would help them, Lord, to learn to be patient. And give them an experience that will lead to hope. And Lord, if there's somebody that's watched this that doesn't know for sure that they're going to go to heaven when they die. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would convict them right now. Convict them of their sin. That they know that they're committing. Whatever it is that your Holy Spirit would show it to them and say, you're not right. You need to come to me. You need to be saved. You speaking that to them. I pray that, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to continue as times get worse, and that we are subjected to hope while living in the bondage of corruption of this world. And Lord, that uh, you would help us to be busy and redeem the days or redeem the time because the days are evil. And I just uh, ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that's going to be it. I'm glad the Lord gave me this uh, word study on hope. Because I need to hear it too. I read the Bible and it's just like, you know, the Lord shows me some of this stuff and I think, wow, it's really what I need to see right now. Because it gets rough sometimes. It gets rough. I take down the microphone over here. Uh, it gets rough. It really does. I know. I know you're struggling. I know, you know, experience, brethren, leads to hope. So, that is going to be it. Um, like I said, there's going to be some, some new studies coming out. A bunch of ideas. Uh, I praise the Lord for uh, this new set up here going to make things a whole lot easier for me to get more videos done so please do keep us in your prayers and uh, thank you to everybody out there for your friendship and um, can't wait to see you and meet you face to face with christ our savior so that's going to be it thank you for watching